Hey guys, welcome to Strong with Raj, your no-nonsense strength training channel. In this video, I'm going to share with you my no-nonsense feedback on using BPC-157 and TB-500. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I inform you that this is not medical advice. This video is made for entertainment purposes only, and I'm not a doctor, and I'm not claiming to be one. Alongside this journey, I had my girlfriend, Dr. Inga, who helped me. So if you want to use any type of peptide therapy, please consult your doctor or general physician. Now moving on, as you might remember, 24th of June this year, I started my eight week long journey of using BPC-157 and TB-500. I have finished my journey and I'm now here to share with you the results. Questions like, did it work? Or is it placebo? Is it safe? And above all, am I able to lift pain-free now? I will answer all those questions. Let's get into it. For those of you who haven't watched my first video where I am taking BPC-157 and TB-500, essentially the start of my journey and I'm explaining what I'm doing, please click the video link here, somewhere here, and then come back to me. Make sure you like and subscribe the video so that I can make more informative videos like this. All right, let's dive into it. Did BPC-157 and TB-500 work? It 100% did, absolutely did. My SI joint pain, which was my main issue, the sacroiliac joint disappeared, 100% gone. It was causing me problem in deadlifts and squats, more in deadlift than squat my left side would seize. I would not be able to go in a hinge position and also not push the floor away and hence my deadlift were really ineffective and was very painful. Squat, not so much. So in that regard, SI joint pain has completely gone. I would wake up with fair bit of stiffness on my left lower back caused by SI joint pain. It also limited me in many activities of daily life, should I say. Uh, for example, uh, tying my shoelaces on my left side. So anything that involved bending and hinging was really painful. And as you know, deadlifts is all about bending and hinging. It's also known as a hinge movement. It was really painful. So SI joint pain, bye-bye. I want to emphasize here that there are many forms of treatment and medicines and all sorts of concepts out there, such as surgery, physiotherapy, chiropractor. I had tried some of them. I also did foam rolling and stretching. It would give me some pain relief temporarily, but as soon as I moved to do my lifting, especially deadlifting, the pain would come back and it will stay on for at least two days and then it will linger around in form of stiffness. Now think of this, all of that gone just because of BPC-157 and TB-500. I'm back again squatting and recently I squatted 190 kg or 180 kg and that was a good thing. Uh, before that I was not able to go up to my heavy squats. I would be in the area of 140, 160. So that's a good news. SI joint pain, gone. Other than that, I also had issue with my left shoulder blade. It would give me numbness in my fingers and also weakness on my left arm. And that was very, very uh, prominently seen on my bench press and overhead press lockout. So my left arm would be a little slower. My right arm would have locked out and my left would still be going. When it came to doing heavy weights, you could see the difference what a seesaw of a bar it was. It was completely lopsided and it was unsafe as well. The pain wasn't there much, but there was this laziness in the left arm. That is almost fixed as well. It's not completely gone. And I have to add that to counter that, I had to start doing an uneven wider grip on my left arm, which is in bench press and overhead press. So my right arm would be here, but my left arm, I'll put it here and then slightly wider. This, this would artificially shorten my left arm and hence it would extend at the same time my right arm would be. That has really helped. 
So two things gone. Other than that, I also had a few pains and niggles in my elbows, both of my elbows. I believe most lifters and gym goers do experience that. I didn't got a diagnosis, but I do believe it was tennis elbow. It would come mostly when I'm doing my squats, trying to jack up my arms, my elbows and shoulders. That is also gone. I never had, uh, it never gave me any issues, but it is almost gone as well. So there are three ways that it helped me and it shows how holistically peptides work. BPC-157 and TB-500. I have to add another point here is that after finishing my therapy, I waited for almost six weeks, today is five weeks and five days, so that I can do a video. I wanted to see that it wasn't a honeymoon period or a placebo effect. I wanted to see that it is still working after stopping the therapy and it still is. As like I said, uh, I have not been um, deadlifting, but I have started doing Romanian deadlift. And the real test would be when I would start doing deadlifts. I have done some lightweight deadlift and it caused no issues, but I'm happy to really master my Romanian deadlifts because that's a great movement of itself. So what I'm trying to say here is that the peptides will work as a main way of addressing the issue, but you have to have an adjunct plan. My adjunct plan was to go lighter in the squats. My adjunct plan was to go for an uneven grip, a wider grip to fix the issue. And my action plan was to do Romanian deadlift instead of deadlifts. The plan was to not give up completely and go home and rest. You have to keep your body moving so that I believe those two compounds that I took can have their effect. The real test for me would be maybe in six to seven months time when I'm planning to go back into deadlifting. By that I mean that by the six or seven from, from now, I will be deadlifting around 180 kg for a set of five. But for now, I'm absolutely pain free and I cannot uh, not give this credit to BPC 157 and TV 500. It is magic. It works like a charm. So, final thoughts. Peptide therapy has definitely worked for me. And it has worked for many people anecdotally. There is a lot of anecdotal data floating around on internet and YouTube and social media that how it has helped many, many people. However, when it comes to legal studies and research, there aren't many studies done on humans. I think there's only one study is being done and rest of them are done in mice. So what my point is, and here I'm putting my silver foil hat on, is that there are some wonderful new technologies, medical technologies and therapies out there such as peptide therapy, stem cell therapy. But it seems like they have been around for a while enough, yet they are not entering the mainstream. Uh, you will not find many doctors uh, prescribing this. There are some strict laws around it as if it's an illegal narcotic drug. And then we have tradition of uh, doctors and health system prescribing analgesia, opioid drugs, and surgery. We know that every system can be better and be, can be improved with so much anecdotal data. And I believe anecdotal data is something that cannot be just put aside. It should be taken into account. And perhaps the stakeholders should move into the direction of also prescribing stem cell therapy, peptide therapy as an adjunct way of managing pain, injuries and those kind of illnesses. I really hope that in future, peptide therapies become more commonplace when it comes to you going to see your GP about some pain and niggle that you have rather than just being put on to some sort of um, analgesia or surgery. I, I wish I would never have to do any surgery. They are important, but I am more responsible to keep myself healthy and keep going this way. I hope that you have enjoyed my no-nonsense feedback on my channel, Strong with Raj, No Nonsense Strength Training. Stay strong, 
See you next time.